Hey guys, welcome back. In this episode, I wanna cover something that was pretty expensive for me that I would love to give to you guys for free, and that is the mindset that I had to adopt in starting my next company. So, as some of you may know, I'm in the process of working on my next business now, and these are some of the things that I had to work through in order to get, you know, work with other people, in order to come up with ideas, in order to be creative, in order to get through all of the various blockers that I went through um, after having started my own company uh, a long time ago and then working W2 for a while and all of the crazy stuff that has kind of blocked me along my path. And so I wanted to make this video to share with you guys. I will probably go into stories on each one of these later on deeper so that they can be more meaningful to you. Um, I think you'll be able to extra extrapolate the lesson or the mistakes that I've made and then use those things to build on so you don't have to make those yourself. But in this video, I just wanted to do a high level overview of each one. And so I have my notes over here that I'm gonna start with, or that I'm gonna read through rather. Um, so number one was, I had a really hard time in my first company in 2016. And, and again, any of these traits can apply to someone that's not just an entrepreneur, but just people in general. I, don't, I think you could be a stay at home mom and you could still struggle with some of these things. And there's a lesson to be learned from all of them. You could be a pro sports player and these could be valid, especially this first one. Um, but I am, again, my audience for me, the people I want to talk to are entrepreneurs, especially entrepreneurs that are getting started and trying to figure out how to make it work. So number one, the one that I really struggled with a lot was figuring out the fine line between humility and confidence. Um, and confidence, I've really started defining more in 2023 and 2024. I started understanding it in a different way. And so like literally it took me from 2016 until 2023 to like really understand what that line was, <clears throat> excuse me, for me, confidence means it's like how you show up, like what you believe about the things you say, con, fide. So con is with, and then fide is inside of, I believe. Um, so it's like, I, I might've butchered that, but it's about what's going on inside. It's about what, you know, like, I've said this in a previous video, only you know how many times you've lied to yourself about something, whether it was, I'm gonna go to the gym, or I'm gonna make this New Year's resolution, or I'm gonna make plans with this person, and it might be something you tell yourself, it might be something you tell other people, and so confidence is your ability to know that you're gonna follow through on the things that you say you're gonna do, which is counterintuitive because that sounds more like integrity, but where the rubber meets the road with confidence is um, when you know that you're gonna follow through and you know um, you don't get the muscle without doing the reps. And so confidence is like the accumulation of that where integrity is like doing the reps, right? So integrity is like lifting the weight, the process. Confidence is the result of having done that. And so um, how that balances out with humility was always really confusing for me because, you know, how do you show up and be confident and not be... Um, arrogant. And so I always thought of myself as a pretty humble person. Um, and so I would be self-deprecating and whatever. And I would like literally crush my confidence at the expense of being humble. Um, and so now I don't see it that way. Like I have a different perspective on things and I'm, I'll take and talk about why later because I had resistance to uh, self-growth and to learning more. But now in making these videos, right? Like I, this is my first week and I've made like whatever, 10 videos. And there's so many people that drop off after their first couple, right? And it's like, I made this commitment to show up and consistently do this thing. I have a strong why is that like, I don't care if people make fun of me. I don't, you know, like, it doesn't matter to me. Like I'm like, I, the haters will be fuel for me because I have this goal of helping other people and not make the same mistakes that I have made. And so that like, that is my ultimate why, right? And so I am, I have like, utter confidence in the direction that I'm going in. I know what it takes to do the work. I know the reps that are involved. And so I can go after that. And I know my ability, like I don't, I don't know everything, but I, my audience, like people starting out in entrepreneurship, I know how to talk to you guys because I'm there, I've been there. I know what mistakes I, you know, I've made and I can help those people. So I'm not talking about stuff that I have zero idea about. So I, I'm, my confidence is strong in the direction, in the content and in the people that I wanna serve. And that allows me to be myself. It allows me to say, hey, you know, like the company that we launched in 2016, like I was the CEO of that company. It was my idea to found it. I had, you know, there was three of us, uh, 
core team, we had like interns as well. I think our interns were the ones that made the most amount of money. That company failed and it was my fault. And it's to have, like I can now have the humility to like look back, but also look forward more importantly at what I'm working on and what I want to do. And there's a greater line between, they're not a pie. Like that, if the, I know I'm ranting on a little bit and I'm not making a ton of sense, but what I'm trying to get at is that uh, humility and confidence, they're not a pie. They don't, you don't have to take a slice of one at the you know sacrifice of another. They're kind of two separate entities. And so your your confidence is your you know your unwavering knowledge and ability that what you don't know you're going to work on learning um, and that you're going to show up consistently and that you you know there's a your mission of who you want to serve and why you want to serve them like you are locked and loaded on that and you know you're going to show up every time you know you're going to become better every time um, and so like once you know that about yourself and you can only do you can only know that by doing the work so like People that don't have confidence, it's because they don't believe the words that come out of their own mouth. Um, and so don't be that person. Do like Just make small things to yourself. If you're in a depression right now, you're going through something, just get out of bed. Like, Just read a book. Just go to the library. If you have uh, anxiety of being around other people, just go to the library. Like, Just do something to get started. Once you do that, you'll start to build momentum. And once you have that momentum, you'll be able to check off bigger uh, tasks, more meaningful tasks. So... Confidence and humility, they don't share the same slices of the same pie. Um, number two is conviction. And I was thinking about this. I was talking to my dad this morning, and we were talking about sales and different things. And I think salespeople generally, um, they have a slimy connotation. And I think back, you know, my, my career started in software sales. And so, like, actually, that's not true. I started in used car sales, which is, like, the slimiest of the slimy. Um, and then I was in software sales for a while. And so... What I noticed a gift that I have is like I was able to look at whatever it was that I'm selling and I was able to find what I believed in about it. And then when I would talk to someone, I could transfer that value. I could trans I could communicate the value of what I thought that car or that piece of software or that thing would be by listening to the other person, understanding their problems, and then you know, my belief in the product would come through. And where conviction is really important is if you listen to Alex Ormosi or you listen to um Dean Graciosi, they talk a lot about how, um, you know, tone and the importance of how you deliver things. And it's like, yes, you could go to uh, a speech thing, you could learn how to do sales speaking, or you could go to a speech therapist, or you could learn how to like, temper your time, uh, your uh, temper, your timing and your tone of your speech and how you deliver things. Because what you say, what you say isn't the words you speak. I mean, it is, but it's also how you deliver them. Do you get quiet? Do you lean in? Do you make eye contact? What's your body language life if you're on Zoom or in person? All of that plays into it. So when you believe about something, when you're like so obsessed with it, um, it comes. Your conviction in that comes through. So if you were to ask me about, um, you know, Lotus, like what's your favorite sports car, whatever, the Lotus Elise for me, like I could rant on about why I think that's the coolest car every day, all day. Um, and so my conviction will come through on that. And so you've got to, if you don't have that ability naturally, you have to develop it. And so you have to find about, uh, if you're a founder, like for my people that I'm talking to, like you know why you're starting this thing. Hope If it's just for money, like you need to reevaluate, like maybe getting another business or, you know, have a stronger mission or a why because the money, I can tell you now, it's not going to be fulfilling when you get to the end of it. Um, that's a whole nother video, but um, having conviction in in the thing that you're doing will really help you when you go to sell it, when you go to fundraise, when you if you want to do that, which I don't recommend, when you go to talk to friends and family about it. And so, conviction is super important because it's going to impact, it's going to pay massive dividends exponentially in how you communicate that thing to other people. Um, I hope my conviction for wanting to help people making these videos comes through to you guys when I make these because. Um, would I like to get famous? Not necessarily. Would I like to be monetized on YouTube? Eh, I wouldn't. A couple extra bucks a month wouldn't hurt. But like, I don't care about any of that as much as I care about transferring this knowledge to other people because I didn't necessarily have it. But there are people that are light years ahead of me, like Alex Hormozzi, like um, Dean Graziosi, like Tony Robbins, like Tom Bilyeu, uh, Myron Golden, Ed Milet, that I've learned from but there's such a big delta. And so I'm like, how do I help people starting out? I hope my conviction to help you guys starting out comes through. Um, 
the the third one is forgiveness. So I know like you guys are probably thinking, oh, this is like so woo woo, whatever. Um, but for me, like. One of the things I appreciate in myself is that I, whenever I hit rock bottom, um, every single time I do that, I have this inclination to go through my phone and like apologize to everybody, like the randomest people, like some high school crush or something that happened a hundred years ago that's like completely irrelevant. And I, I don't know why I do that, but it's been really helpful for me. And now I like, I number one, I try not to be in situations where I'm going to have to ask someone for forgiveness later on. But number two, like I am very aware of it. It's something I, I try to practice a lot if I know someone, if I'm upset with someone or if they're upset with me, it's something I'm aware of. And it's, it's really important because it literally will haunt you. It will rob you of sleep. If you're trying to, to do meditation or you're trying to manifest or whatever it is that you're trying to do, or you're trying to, you know, pray or like, you know, have some spiritual connection it gets in the way of all of that. Like having a grudge against people, which was something I'm actually really strong at, <laughs> um, is it's a really hard thing to break. And it, it, I would go around life and it was like, I am from New Jersey, I'm from the East Coast. And so someone would cut me off and I'm from an Italian family too, to make matters worse. I would literally think about someone cutting me off for like hours. I would have like an hour and a half commute to work. I would get to work and I would still be pissed off about someone that cut me off two hours ago. And it's like, not only are you giving your physical life force away, if you don't believe me, go watch Joe Dispenza on YouTube and like look into that, like you're physically giving your life force away, but you're also giving your mental life force away. Like you could be processing so many other things. You could be working on so many other things. So you're literally down-regulating genes, you're down-regulating hormones, you're down-regulating gene expression, um, all the health stuff, and then you're just moving away, like you're you're not aligning yourself with whatever your mission is, whatever your why is, you're focused on something that's irrelevant and happened in the past. Um, and so having forgiveness for people is like, it's huge. Like it's just huge to be able to like have stuff come in, stuff, um, it hits us, and then to be able to release it and let it go. And um, Mickey Singer, Michael Singer, he calls himself Mickey Singer, I think sometimes. You can watch some of his videos. He, I love his phrase, he has a phrase, he's like, we go through life and we basically walk around picking up garbage, like literally think of like Santa Claus, but like a bag of trash that you're just picking up. Oh, that person said this. Oh, that person cut me off or they did this and that. And we hold this stuff around and it's like, don't do that. Like you don't need to be carrying that garbage around. Just let it, let it go. Um, and that doesn't mean suppress it and push it down and have it come up 10 years from now. It means realize like, pause, step back, how serious was it that person cutting me off? Like, even if they touched the front of my car or whatever, like, and I have to go to the body shop in the absolute worst case scenario, it's like, it's not that big of a deal. And generally much, the other stuff in life, the person that cuts in front of you at Starbucks, whatever, like, it's trivial. It is absolutely trivial. And if you can learn to forgive people, you can make it into a game where it becomes fun. It's like, you can laugh. You can laugh about stuff that used to bother you. And I think that's a good place to be because then it doesn't have power over you, over your mind, over your body, over your spirit. So learning to forgive other people and learning to um, admit when you're wrong and ask other people for forgiveness is super critical in terms of you being able to progress or me being able to progress. Okay, the next one is a, probably the biggest one for me, which is resistance versus acceptance. Um, I, I, this one is conflicting for me because it's not conflicting. I'm very clear on it, but it's interesting. I was listening to a podcast this morning with Lila Hormozzi and her, uh, her husband, Alex Hormozzi, and they were talking through, um, maybe it was Dean Graziosi too. I forget who was interviewing them, but resistance, it's like you want to be unwavering in the thing that you want to solve, right? Like you, you don't want to have an iron fist and go around bossing people around and screaming and yelling and whatever, but like you, you want to be mindful of your time. You want to be mindful of the people that you let into your inner circle. You want to be mindful of, you know, how you're spending your life force um, and so having some level of resistance in terms of like, if someone invites me to go out to a party and get bombed or, it, you know, if um, someone invites me to go to a strip club or whatever, they're not certain things that align with where I want to go. And so I have like, I'm pretty good at resisting certain things. Before 2023, I was really good at resisting everything because I, um, I'll get into it in a second. But so I'm not, when I talk about resistance, I'm not talking about um, things to stay away from that are like logical and make sense. I'm saying, and I love this phrase, there's a, um, 
a lady that was speaking at ClickFunnels Two Comma Awards, and I, I I don't remember her name, but there was a recording of, the, of her like going and accepting this award, and she gets on stage and she said one of the things that was so important to her that she had learned was, um, be so careful of what you think you already know. I believe that was the quote. Be so careful of what you're so sure of. Be so careful of what you're so sure of, and. She goes on to say, because behind that is probably the next step to the next level that you want to get to, um, or the solution to the next level that you want to get to. And so there, it's good to question everything. It's good to be curious. It's good to poke things and prod them and be the scientist in your life. Like there's all kinds of weird health stuff that I'm doing to like try to reduce toxins from my life. Um, in terms of like parabens and fluoride and all this crazy stuff I'm experimenting with it because I'm like if it's going to give me a cognitive edge like I'm open to trying it which is stuff I would have never done before um and so not just in physical things that are in our life but also with ideas and concepts there was a lot of people uh, I remember the first video the first video thumbnail I saw of Myron Golden he's a um he's a business coach that teaches business from a biblical perspective and he's really interesting there's no one quite like him and I saw this thing and it was like he has this book, The Trash Man to the Cash Man, and I'm just like, Th this guy, I'm like, this is the dumbest thing. Like, when I had first saw it, I was like, so resistant to it, because I'm like, he, like, no, like, everything about it, he was talking about sales and all this stuff, I'm like, this guy, and he had like, the suit, this beautiful suit, and the tie, and I'm like, this is so sleazy, like, I can't, and I, th I had thought that I already knew what this was about, just by judging the book by its cover, literally, and we go through life like that, and we look at other people like that and other people say things and politically they say this and we think that and it's like it's it's so much harder to just sit there and listen and then think about it and take notes and instead of getting ready to say what you're going to say in conversation to somebody else just actually let, let that go it's okay if you forget your thought and just listen to what they're saying or consume a, a youtube video from someone that is in the thing that you're interested in so for me maybe sales maybe finding founding a company maybe marketing maybe um, building a SaaS company, whatever. Um, maybe it's health-related stuff. So listening to stuff you're interested in, but being exposed to concepts that you, you've you always been against, right? Like maybe intermittent fasting or maybe like um, having how to have a six-figure sales day, you know, like things that kind of maybe would repulse you or like sales in general. I know sales pushes a lot of buttons for people. They think salespeople are like disgusting and they get grossed out by the idea of ever being a salesperson. But as a founder, it's something you're going to need to do anyway. So not having resistance to different things, um, letting your guard down, having a level of acceptance. And this kind of ties to the last one too, of forgiveness, where it's like, you can't change the past. Like it's already in the past. Um, Hal Elrod, he's a really interesting guy. You should look him up and hear his story. But I, I, he had a, a really famous quote. He made them into wristbands and it was, can't change it. The phrase was, can't change it. Like if it's in the past and it already happened, it's like, move on. Like you can't change it. You need to move on. And so... Having acceptance for other people's ideas, other people's thoughts, I think so much of success is buried in the zig when other people are zagging, or it could be the inverse, however you want to say that phrase, but you get where I'm going. So be mindful of being resistant to new ideas and new thoughts and new things and people. Um, and then the last one that I want to end with is obsessive self-growth. Um, and obsessive self-growth is more than just like me, 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 me. But for me in my particular mission, and hopefully for you guys, it's like, I want to grow because I want to serve the people around me in a greater capacity, right? And that could be software. It could be you as a missionary. It could be you as a stay-at-home mom. But until you become obsessive with growing yourself, with learning more, with staying curious, and the phrase staying curious used to make my skin crawl because it's just so tacky and it's like, I'm not, I don't love reading books. I'll listen to an audio book. And so... Self-growth was something that really is like icky to me. So I, I understand those of you that are in that camp, but when, for me personally, all of that resistance to it went away when I aligned my self-growth with, oh yeah, like if I learn about this health stuff, I can help my friends. I can help my mom. I can help my dad. I can help my brother with early onset dementia. I can help myself. Um, but that was like number one. It's like I can help the people I love and care about the most. And then there's you guys who I don't even know um, who hopefully one day I'll be able to meet, but I'm like, I will be able to serve people in a greater capacity by becoming more than I currently am, by getting a coach, by watching these videos, by learning. And so 
that's obsessive self growth has been like a huge part of my life now. Like I literally, um, from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed, I'm constantly listening to stuff in the bathroom, in the shower, in the car, um, at the dog park, on walks, everywhere, and that it serves me well. It helps me a lot. It helps me speak differently. It helps me think differently. It helps me look at other people and realize, like walking by somebody outside, like we're on the spinning rock in the middle of nowhere, like. I have such a level of gratitude for just, I can't not walk by somebody and smile now for the most part um, because I'm like constantly growing and constantly learning and it's like we all have something to bring to one another. We all have a different set of gifts and this process of learning, I'm like so excited for every day in a way that I've never been before in my life and that kind of feeds into the last part of obsessive self-growth which is like for me, I, I would always feel weird when other people around me be succeeding in other people around me that were succeeding specifically that I deemed like dumb or they didn't have good character. And it's still, it's still a thing. There's still people that I know of that, you know, I think their character could use some improvements, but they're like winning and they're succeeding. And I'm like, I've gone from being envious of that to like, I am so happy for them, like genuinely so happy for them. And I look and I say, I'm so obsessed with not resisting things and with growing, that I'm like, what can I learn from what they're doing? And so before I used to shun away and write off like people around me that were succeeding and um, that maybe I didn't feel like deserved it. Who the hell am I to, to say that someone doesn't deserve success or whatever um, in the first place? But I've turned that into a learning opportunity. And so how you frame things and how you look at them if you're in a self-growth mindset or a continual obsessive self-growth, continuous improvement mindset, you'll be able to turn your weaknesses, um, turn things that are painful for you. You'll be able to turn those into something that will calcify you and strengthen you and add value to you and push you towards your mission. So I hope these things bless you. I hope this helps you. Have a great week.